Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Jazzy Time with your host, Bailey. How is it going, everybody? Um, I had not planned on voicing this over, but Vinny had entered the room and lots of noise was made. So I'm doing a set of earrings in this video, and what we're going to do first is the top dangly part with the beads. So what I'm grabbing out is an earring hook, a uh, jump rod, or a jewelry rod with a hook on the bottom. And I've got these acrylic beads I got from Walmart in the jewelry section. And I am grabbing three beads. Two of them look like green pearls and one of them has kind of like a turquoise sort of stone crackle on it. And I'm just going small, big, small. And then I'm going to create a loop at the top. So I'm gonna take my jewelry pliers and turn that 90 degrees. I'm gonna snip it about halfway. And then I'm going to turn my wrist and loop it. And I'm going to leave it slightly open and I'm going to hook the earring hook on top. And then I'm going to continue the loop and close the hook. And I do have to fix this later because I realized it was too long, but I do eventually fix it. So that is ready, and now I can set that aside. So now I'm going to be creating the colored part of the earring. So I'm taking this um, frame again, and I'm making sure that little loop is facing down towards my tile when I start it. And I just roughed up the inside of the ring again, like uh, the last couple times I've done jewelry, uh, to make sure that the gel sticks. So I am creating a base with sheer brilliance, and I'm just gonna fill that in and then I'm gonna sort of wiggle the frame around on it after it's been filled to make sure that um, it's sort of overlapped on the back so that I have a complete seal. And then I'm going to cure that in my lamp for 99 seconds. So now that that is cured, I'm going to wipe off the tacky layer and I'm going to apply two coats of white and completely cure that. It doesn't have to be 100% opaque, but just enough so that the color stands out. And now that that is all done, I'm going to wipe the tacky layer again. And I have my ring palette on my ring because I'm going to tape this with some scotch tape to the ring because the the stem at the top is not big enough to hold without like your fingers being in the way or like uh, the pinching tool doesn't get a good enough hold on it so I've kind of just randomly come up with um, sort of making a little holder out of the ring and that works just dandy for me so um, now I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to be doing a uh, six, six by six grid, I think it is. Um, I just start with uh, straight down the middle and then I sort of um, block off as evenly as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect because once you start painting in that, it all gets covered anyway. Um, so I block off my six by six and then I'm going to take black gel paint and a dotting tool and I'm going to put a dot inside of every intersection that I've drawn and I'm going to cure it for 30 seconds in my LED lamp. So I'm also here showing you guys the colors that I'm going to be using. I have black and white and I have a large scale of different teal colors and also a little bit of a green and as well as a little bit of glitter in there. This one is called Vercarious by Nail Innovations.
Also, when doing this grid uh, with the dots as well, you want to make sure that you carry it as far up and to the sides as possible because you want it to look like one consistent image, like you don't want it to stop uh, before the circle ends, if that makes sense. You want it to sort of carry off the sides and be one continuous image. So make sure you get the dots right to the top, to the bottom, sides, etc. So I'm going to cure that for 30 seconds. Now that that is somewhat cured, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to block uh, off my woven pattern and I'm going to zoom in here. So every other square you want these vertical outward brackets like you see me drawing here and then turn 90 degrees and then every opposing one that doesn't have brackets in it you want to do the same thing but horizontally if that makes sense um, I do it's hard to see here with the pencil but I do um, I start painting and I realized that I messed up my grid somehow so I had to paint over it and I redid it with yellow sharpie so you guys can see better and I also sped up uh, the painting of all the colors as well because when you block out the grid this way a lot of people will do the woven patterns with like a single color i wanted it to be a little more on the difficult side and have multiple colors so that's why i'm doing it this way so yeah it becomes easier to understand when um, it switches to the yellow marker So here you guys can kind of see how I messed up and then had to paint back over in white. So I'm going in and I just basically select which rows I want. It takes a little bit of thinking when doing it this way uh, versus doing it like a single color. You just got to kind of dot in where you want your color and then fill in the proper spaces. And make sure that your, you know, your lines are either bowed in or bowed out the way they're supposed to be on the, like the cross hatching or woven bit. And yeah, then you get like a multicolor woven pattern. So now that I've got uh, all my coloring on, I've got black and white, a dotting tool, and my cleanup brush. So first I go back in with my black dots, and then I trace the grid again with black. And then I cure that for 60 seconds in my LED lamp. So before I cure all the, before I cure it, um, I go back over the dots one more time to make sure that that spot is uh, big as it's supposed to be. Um, everywhere that it seems the ribbons are going underneath of one another, I add uh, shadow shadowing um, with a dry brush. I just sort of tap it in and give it that little bit of shadow. And then every ribbon that seems to be going over top of one another gets the white highlight. Once it's all cured, said, and done, I'm going to encapsulate everything with sheer brilliance again and wipe off the tacky layer. I just sort of float it on and make sure it's as level as I can get it. 
And now that everything is all finished, I'm going to open up the bottom loop just slightly with my jewelry pliers and I'm going to slip the image on the bottom and our earrings will be all complete. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. These were actually inspired by, I think it's ovarian cancer. I wanted sort of like a teal ribbon kind of thing going on. But anywho, if you guys would like to see more jewelry videos, I'll, I'm also going to be doing some big toenail art videos because I'm really liking this woven pattern. Please like and subscribe, comment down below. I hope you guys all 